Good morning YouTube! Just a short talking motion picture this morning to update you on Lotus Car's current recommendations for antifreeze and gearbox oil for your Elan M100. Now I say current recommendations, that is current as of the time that we're making this video which is August 2016. So bear in mind if you're watching this in the year 2525 things may have moved on. But right here right now, starting with antifreeze. Now in a recent video we were changing the coolant on the Elan's cooling system. And um, after that video, a viewer, Steve, asked a very good question, which is whether red organic acid technology antifreeze is safe for use in the Elan. Now, to be honest, I didn't know for sure the correct answer to this, so I asked Lotus Car's technical department in Hethel. And to cut a long story short, they don't know for sure either. But before we get into the details of that, let's just back up a little bit and go and collect all those viewers who we've probably lost already with terms like organic acid technology. This and this are both antifreeze and they are not the same. Now this, is dif this difference here is quite subtle, you're going to have to look very closely, you may need to adjust the settings on your monitors a bit, but if you look very closely at this one, you'll notice that it is blue, and if you look closely at this one, you'll notice that it is pink, and the difference is not just in colour, they are chemically different, these two antifreezes. Now they're both ethylene glycol based. So all we're going to talk about today is ethylene glycol based antifreeze which forms the vast majority of antifreezes on the market. There are, other, there are other antifreezes available, things like Emmons waterless coolant if you've ever heard of that, yeah, that uses a completely different chemical. Now they're not very common, they're quite expensive, I don't know anything about them so we're not going to talk about things like Emmons waterless coolant today. If you want to consider using that then speak to the people at Evans. If you go into your local motor factory and ask for antifreeze it's overwhelmingly likely you'll be offered one of these two types of antifreeze, either the blue stuff or the red stuff that are based on ethylene glycol. Until the late 1990s, all antifreezes looked like this. They were bluish or greenish in colour. About 95% of that is ethylene glycol, but to that is added about 5% of other stuff. And it's that other stuff that gives it the corrosion protection. The ethylene glycol stops it freezing, but the 5% of things that are added to it, which include some silicates, give it the corrosion protection and prevent the scale buildup. In the late 1990s, a new type of antifreeze appeared on the market, which is red or pinkish or orange in colour. Now, this is still 95% ethylene glycol, but the 5% of other stuff that gives the corrosion protection is now done by a group of chemicals called organic acids. So this is known as organic acid technology, antifreeze, or the acronym for that is O's, organic acid technology. Now the main advantages of this stuff are that those organic acids, those corrosion inhibitors, last longer. So typically cars that use this from new have a coolant change interval of four or five years. Whereas cars that were filled with the blue silica based antifreeze, you have to change the coolant every two years. Now, when I have an internet connection and not much else to do, I like to busy myself on some fairly specialised German pornography sites. But other people, they get their kicks from spreading rumours around the internet about antifreeze. So almost as soon as this stuff appeared on the market, rumours started circulating on the internet about how it damages older cars' cooling systems. Whatever turns you on, man, I am not here to judge you. But, Antifreeze is offered for sale in the UK are covered by a British standard, this one, British standard 6580-2010, and that in turn is based on a similar American standard that covers antifreezes for sale in the States. Now this specifies all sorts of things, so things like freezing point, boiling point and so on, they're all covered in there, and it doesn't differentiate at all between whether the uh, antifreeze is based on organic acids or whether it's based on silicates, it doesn't even matter whether it's ethylene glycol based, any antifreeze that's going to conform to BS6580 has to meet the same standards. Section 10 is concerned with metal corrosion rates. So a range of metals are boiled in the antifreeze for two weeks and the amount of metal loss in that two week period is recorded and measured and as long as it doesn't exceed these values then the antifreeze passes and conforms to BS 6580. Now that list of metals includes copper, solder, brass, steel, cast iron and aluminium alloy which covers all of the metals that are used in your Elan's cooling system and so for that reason I've never been able to see any reason why a red organic acid technology antifreeze that conforms to BS 6580 should cause any harm to your Elan's cooling system. And I'm supported in that view by my local Lotus dealership, because when I spoke to their service department about this, 
they said they've been filling every alarm that comes into them for service with red antifreeze for years now and they've never had any problems. They also pointed out, quite wisely I thought, that given the amount of this that's being used in older cars cooling systems now, if this did damage older cars cooling systems there'd be a lot more old cars parked on the hard shoulder of the motor with steam coming out of the bonnets than there are. So they don't believe that there's any, any cause for concern. However, that was just our sort of two opinions. I didn't know for certain, so I went to Lotus Cars Technical Department in Hethel to see if we could get an official view from the factory. And they got back to me very quickly, actually. Uh, Tony's given me an official response more or less the next day. And the official view of the factory is, and I quote, as we have not tested O's on the alarm, so cannot advise on this. So, basically they haven't tested it, so they can't recommend it. However, he did send me at the same time a service bulletin from 2002, in which O antifreeze had been tested in the Elise, the early Elise's cooling system, and found to be safe. So this service bulletin was sent out to the dealer network, recommending that all early Elise's converted from blue antifreeze to red antifreeze and increase the change interval from two to four years. However, take that with a pinch of salt, that's not particularly relevant to the alarm because the K-series engine that was used in the earlier leagues, that's an all aluminium engine which is quite different uh, from your mixture of cast iron aluminium that's used in the Elan's engine. I mean it does say at the bottom of here as well that they've only tested the Elise so uh, other Lotus products should continue therefore to use non-oak type coolants unless otherwise advised. So, I think from that we can conclude that Lotus Cars' recommendation is they don't know that this damages your cooling systems, however they are recommending that you continue to use blue silicate based antifreeze and change it every two years. So I hope that clears that one up and thanks to Steve for asking the question, it was something I just hadn't thought of when we made the video. Gearbox oil. While I was on to Lotus Technical Department about antifreeze, I also took the opportunity to ask them about what gearbox oil we should be using in the Atlanta's transmission these days. And fortunately, the answer to this one is much more straightforward. When the car was made, different lubricants were specified depending on whether you have a Series 1 or a Series 2 car. Series 1 cars used a lubricant made by Mobile for the gearbox, Series 2 cars it was a Castrol product that was recommended, but both of those are now obsolete, so you have to use something else. Now, when the car was made, the current specification for gearbox oil was what was called GL4, and that has been superseded now by a thing called GL5, and there has been some concern that GL5 gearbox oils aren't safe for use in older gearboxes and there is a genuine cause for concern here because it's to do with a wear additive that has been added to GL5 oils. Now that works by coating the metal parts, obviously most of the internal components in the gearbox are made of steel, so it works by coating the steel parts with a protective layer so that when the teeth of the gears mesh together that protective coating is softer than the steel. So where the teeth mesh together it's the protective coating that gets stripped off rather than the metal being plucked away and then obviously when the gear is unmeshed that protective coating reforms from the oil and that process just continues throughout the life of the gearbox oil. The problem is that that protective coating while it's softer than steel it's harder than things like brass which are still used sometimes in gearboxes for bushings and particularly very old, older gearboxes often use brass for things like synchromesh rings. So the problem there is that the protective coating is harder than the brass, so for brass components it's the brass that's getting plucked away rather than the protective coating. That does seem to be a genuine problem with GL5 oils used in older gearboxes. So while I was on to them about the antifreeze, I asked Lotus about that and the, the, the advice on that one is absolutely clear. Regarding GL4 gearbox oil, it is still widely available and should be used as recommended. Okay, so with that one, a uh, straightforward recommendation not to use GL5, make sure you get a GL4 only oil. Most oils that you buy will say GL345. You don't want that, you want an oil that is just GL4. So hopefully that's cleared that one up, and now that video's done, I can get back to watching German women defecating on one another.